Good morning, students. I am Sunil Kumar, PGT Accountancy in Cambridge International School, Desova. We are very thankful with the students' overwhelmed response to the school's e-learning program. We assure you that this will continue in this crisis time and beyond. Students, let's recapitulate what we have done in the previous classes. In this chapter, we have understood the following. Why the firm admits new partner, the calculation of new profit sharing ratio and the sacrificing ratio, valuation of goodwill and accounting treatment of goodwill in various cases. With the flow of the chapter, we are going to start revaluation of assets and reassessment of liabilities. At the time of admission of a new partner, it is always desirable to ascertain whether the assets of the firms are shown in the books at their current values. The values of the assets may be different from their book value because with time, the values of assets may increase or decrease. In case of liabilities, it is possible that the amount payable is different from that of in the book. It is also possible that some assets and liabilities are not recorded in the books. It is necessary to revalue assets and liabilities of the firm in case of admission of a partner so that new partner neither put to an advantage nor to disadvantage due to change in the market value of assets and liabilities. The change in the value of assets and liabilities is adjusted through the account called revaluation account or profit and loss adjustment account. This account deals with increase in the value of assets, unrecorded assets or decrease in the amount of liabilities are credited. Decrease in the value of assets, unrecorded liability and increase in the amount of liabilities are debited in it. Now we are going to do accounting treatment of revaluation of assets and reassessment of liabilities. Revaluation of assets mean increase or decrease in the values of assets and reassessment of liabilities is also called uh, there is increase or decrease in the amount of liabilities. So here we are going to do accounting treatment of assets and liabilities on revaluation. There are six cases under this. Number one, for increase in the value of assets, journal entry will be sundry assets account debit to revaluation account. Second, to decrease in the value of assets, the entry will be revaluation account to sundry assets account. Rule says whenever assets increases, it is always debit and whenever it is decreases, the assets will be credited. Journal entry number three for increase in the amount of liabilities entry will be revaluation account debit to sundry liabilities account. Number four for decrease in the amount of liabilities journal entry will be liabilities account debit to revaluation account. Sometimes there are certain unrecorded assets and liabilities for that accounting treatments, number fifth is for unrecorded assets. The journal entry will be unrecorded assets account debit to revaluation account. Number sixth, for unrecorded liabilities, revaluation account debit to unrecorded liabilities account. Now these are the six journal entries when there is increase or decrease in the value of assets or liabilities or when there are unrecorded assets or unrecorded liabilities these are the following entries we have to do after passing journal entries we have to prepare revaluation account as we all know that whatever is written in journal entry is transferred to the certain ledger's account here the ledger is revaluation account. Whatever is debited in journal entry is credited in the ledger account. 
in revaluation re account. So whatever is written on the debit side in journal entry will be recorded on the credit side of the revaluation account and whatever is written in credit side of the journal entry will be transferred to the debit side of revaluation account. Revaluation accounts, another name is profit and loss account, adjustment account. So whatever is written on the debit side, these are the decrease in the value of assets and increase in the amount of liabilities. These are, on debit side, all losses and expenses are recorded and on credit side, all incomes and gains are recorded. So we are starting with debit side. On debit side, first we have written, we have uh, written to assets account whenever the decrease in the value on revaluation to liabilities account when the amount on reassessment will increase to liabilities account that is unrecorded liabilities to partners capital account if any partner is given remuneration salary or commission to cash account when there are certain expenses occurred on revaluation to profit on revaluation which is transferred to partners capital account or current account in case partners capitals are fixed. On credit side, by assets account if the value of assets increases. By liabilities account if the amount of liability decreases. By unrecorded assets by loss on revaluation transferred to partner's capital account or current account if the capitals of the partners are fixed. So there will be only one thing, either there is a profit on revaluation or loss on revaluation. So it will be one, any one of, the, of it will, which will be recorded in revaluation account. To understand it in a better way, let's start to do a question. Ashu and Mamta were partner sharing profits equally. Their balance sheet as at 31st March 2020 was liability side, creditors 50,000, bills payable 15,000, outstanding expenses 3,000, capital accounts Ashu 60,000, Mamta 40,000. The total is 1 lakh. And total of asset side is 1,68,000. On asset side, cash 12,000, cash at bank 15,000, debtors 20,000, less provisions 500, which makes 19,500. Stock 20,000, furniture 10,000, machinery 18,000, and land and building 73,500. The total of balance sheet is 1,68,000. Nitu is admitted as a partner from 1st April 2020 on the following terms. First, Mitu will get one fifth share in profit and she will bring rupees 20,000 as her capital and rupees 5,000 as her share of goodwill. Second, goodwill brought by Mitu will be withdrawn by Ashu and Mamta. Number three, provision for doubtful debt should be brought up to 5% on debtors. Four, machinery be reduced by 2000 and furniture by 12.5%. Let stock be valued at 23,000. Sixth, land and building be appreciated by 20%. Seventh, investment of rupees 2000, which did not appear in the books, should be recorded. Eight, out of the amount of insurance premium which was debited to profit and loss account, rupees 5000 be carried forward as unexpired insurance. Ninth, a bill of rupees 5000 for electricity expenses was not accounted. Fast necessary journal entries, prepare revaluation account, partner's capital account, and the balance sheet. I hope. All would have understood the question as the question is very similar to that of previous chapter. Here, the new partner, when he comes, she comes in the business, she brings capital and the amount of goodwill with her. So the first journal entry is cash account debit 
to Mitu's capital account to premium for goodwill account. So the total cash Mitu has brought rupees 25,000 out of which 20,000 is of her capital and 5,000 her share of goodwill. So 25,000 is debited, 20,000 and 5,000 will be credited in journal entry. Entry number two, the amount of premium of goodwill, whatever she has brought is divided or given to the sacrificing partner for the sacrifice they have made when new partners entered. So the journal entry will be premium for goodwill account debit to Ashu's capital to Mamta's capital. Premium for goodwill is 5000 which is on written on debit side and 2500 and 2500 the ratio of sacrifice they have made for the incoming partner. After that according to the question both the partners has withdrawn their share of goodwill. So the journal entry is Ashu's capital account debit with 2500, Mamta's capital account debit with 2500 to cash account 5000 is credited. Next entry is for the revaluation account. Revaluation account debit to provision for doubtful debts to machinery account to furniture account to outstanding electricity expenses account. The amount for revaluation is 8750 which is debited. Provision for doubtful debts is credited with 500. Machinery credited with 2000. Furniture credited with 1250. Outstanding electricity expenses with 5000. This is decrease in the value of assets and increase in the amount of liabilities. Next entry is stock account debit, land and building account debit, investment account debit, prepaid insurance premium account debit with the amount stock with 3000 land and building debit with 14,700 investment account debit with 2000 prepaid insurance account debit with 5000 to revaluation account 24,700. When the assets are debited, it means the value of assets have increased. So these are profit for the firm. Now we will calculate, we will add all debit revaluation with and deduct credit revaluation. If the credit revaluation is greater than the debit revaluation, then there will be profit. So here the revaluation in this entry, first entry is 8750, which is loss for the organization. Now, in next entry, revaluation account is credited with 24,700. It is the gain for the firm. Now, we will take the difference of 24,700 and 8,750. The difference is 15,950, which is the profit of on revaluation. So the journal entry is revaluation account debit with 15,950 to Ashu's capital account. They are equal partners, so par a profit will be distributed equally 7,975 to Mamta's capital account 7,975. This is our journal entries. Now revaluation journal entries are transferred to the revaluation account. So on debit side, we will write to provision for doubtful debts 500 to machinery account 2000 to furniture 1250 to outstanding electricity expenses 5000. On credit side, by stock 3000, by land and building 14700, by investment 2000, by prepaid insurance premium 5000. The total of credit side is 24,700 and the total of debit side is 8,750. So we will take the difference between 24,700 and 8,750. The difference is 15,950 and this is the profit on revaluation which is transferred to Ashu and Mamta's capital account in equal ratio which makes 7,975 7,000 
975. After preparing revaluation account, partner's capital account will be prepared. According to the journal entries, what, uh, all the partner's account will be credited with the gain and debited with the amount they have paid or withdrawn. So first of all, we have to write by balance brought down on the credit side. This is the capital amount of the partners. It is Ashu 60,000, Mamta 40,000, Neetu has, do not have any capital um, earlier. Now, by cash, Neetu ha has brought 20,000 capital. By premium for goodwill, that is in Ashu's account 2,500, Mamta's account 2,500, Neetu nil. By revaluation account, this is profit on revaluation, which is transferred from revaluation account 7,975, 7,975, and Meetu will get nothing in profit as she is new partner to the firm. On debit side, to cash, Ashu 2,500, Mamta 2,500. This cash is withdrawn by the partner, what they have credited in their account by way of good premium for goodwill. Now the balance which is left, it, it is the capital of the partners, 67,975 for Ashu, Mamta 47,975, Mitu 20,000. The total of partners capital account, Ashu 70,475, Mamta 50,475. After preparing partners capital account, balance sheet of the firm is prepared balance sheet is prepared as at 1st april 2020 when new partner is admitted now the firm is reconstituted on liability side bills payable still 15000 creditors there is no change 50000 outstanding expenses 8000 capitals of the partners are now changed capital 67975 ashu mamta 47975 mitu 20,000. The total of partner's capital is 1,35,950. On asset side, cash in hand 32,000, cash at bank 15,000, stock 23,000, debtors after deducting the amount 20,000 minus 1,000 gives 19,000. Investment 22,000, sorry, prepared insurance premium. 5,000, furniture 8,750, machinery 16,000, land and building 88,200. The total of the balance sheet is 2,8,950. Now to reach on the figure of cash in hand, we have to prepare a cash account in the working note. In working note, we have prepared cash account. Cash is an asset, so its opening balance will be on debit side. So we have written to balance brought down from the balance sheet that is 12,000. Neetu as a new partner she brought her capital 20,000 and premium for goodwill 5,000. Total is 37,000. Now on credit side Ashu and Mamta has withdrawn cap their share of pre goodwill premium that is 2,500, 2,500 and the balance which is left with the firm is 32,000 and it is written in the balance sheet in cash in hand that is 32,000. Dear student, this completes the question and today we learned how to prepare revaluation re account and how to do journal entries for revaluation re of assets and reassessment of liabilities. Thank you student. This is all for the day. Tomorrow we will come with another topic. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy and stay at home. Thank you.